Hey everybody, Engage and Will here uh, with Chris Thomas, uh, publishing producer on Battleborn. Uh, Chris, we got a chance to check out Battleborn uh, a little while earlier today. We liked it a lot, um, but I always like hearing from the people who work on Battleborn. Can you tell me, what is your elevator pitch for this game? Can you tell us what it's all about, you know, the multiplayer that's in the game, the single player aspect, which I found out about today, which was really cool. Just, what is Battleborn? Of course. So, at its core, it's, it's a first person shooter. And I think what really makes it stand out is the fact that it has these 25 really unique playable characters. Super unique characters. And, and each one of them, they have their own special abilities, their own crazy personalities, their own play styles. And those, those heroes, those Battleborn, are trying to essentially uh, save, the, save the universe. They're trying to save the very last star that's, that's still in the universe from being destroyed from this like, crazy evil that no one really understands yet. But Sounds great. <laughs> People are going to love that. Um, so the characters, like you said, are very interesting. They're all unique, and they all have their own personalities. And, they, they, and they're talking constantly throughout this game, which I was blown up with. How, how, what was the, the character design process like on this project? It's actually, yeah. dude, I, it's, it's, it's honestly really cool. So one of the things that Gearbox did earlier in the earlier in the production was they literally opened up their their um, character pitch process to the entire company. So it was anyone, anyone from a QA guy to an artist to an engineer, um, they even opened it up to us, um, could just submit a pitch. Basically, they had like a certain set of rules, like you have to do a certain, um, a certain few things, but like you had to submit a sketch, you had, to, you had to, like, to block out how their abilities were gonna work. And honestly, you got the most insane character concepts out of that. And the ones that actually were, were the very best, the ones that, that really like, you know, became like the ones that you know, the one that's in the game right now are the 25 that you guys are going to see when it launches. Now, did you submit anything? I, I didn't. I, was, I, I wish I, I, wish I could have. We, we actually thought about it, but, man, I was way too busy. you got to push that artistic skill, man. No, he would have been like a stick figure. <laughs> well, a stick figure is cool. <laughs> well, so, so what was the goal when you set out to uh, make Battleborn? Was it, was it to focus on a campaign? Did you know you wanted to get into maybe competitive gaming with the multiplayer aspect? What was the overall, did you just want to create a unique, unique experience for a first-person shooter? Or? Sure. Uh, well, it was a little bit of both of, uh, both of those things. You know, Gearbox, uh, it's been a while since they've actually made a competitive multiplayer game. And they actually they have a lot of people there that really love that type of game. Um, and they had been working on Borderlands 2 for a while, and they really kind of wanted to, to stretch and, and, and try doing something new. And, you know, they had, they had this kind of plan that they wanted to do something really cool. We had all these crazy characters, and they wanted to create a world and a universe where they could all coexist. And that's really, I mean, that's really just like where it was born. They just started, they started riffing on, like, how do we have these characters coexist in the same space? And that's how the whole last star story, like being at the end of the universe, that's how all of that sort of evolved and, and came to be. What kind of uh, hours are you looking at out of the, the campaign of the single player? Um, to be f totally honest, we actually don't know how long it, it fully is right now because it's still in development. And a lot of things will change. Like uh, the, the map that you guys played today, uh, that's only a portion of a single mission. So uh, obviously, obviously, I think it ended with that big, that big boss coming in, yeah. um, and so I, I, I died once. You died. So you died? I, well, everyone else died multiple times. I was helping them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I mean, you, you have the the single player. You, it's a co-op game as well. You yeah. could do co-op uh, multiplayer. Uh, the, what we were doing, battling the different enemies and everything. One of the things I really liked was. Um, you know, the characters each had their unique abilities, and, and to figure out the best way to use them are pretty simple to pick up. So I like that, but it definitely requires a little bit of strategy. So you have your different power-ups, and then for Oscar Mike, which was the guy I was using, you could call in your airstrike, yep. you know, that kind of thing. So it was just a matter of the right timing of when you do that and how you would support your enemies or your uh, people that you're playing with around you. So fr from a strategy perspective, was that something that you wanted to make sure you could include in the game, and how does that relate to competitive multiplayer? Well, that goes into balancing the balancing the game. It's really hard to take, you know, create a game where you have a melee character and a range like a sniper class, and you know, maybe a, a character that's m more like casting spells. And uh, it's hard to figure that figure out the balance there so that they all work together or that they it makes sense that they're fighting each other. Um, so we we took a lot, uh, taking a lot of time. You know, we focus test the game constantly. We're constantly tuning it, and making sure that it all feels it feels right. Um, but what was the second part? Well, in the competitive multiplayer, uh, like so, how many people can you have in a map uh, at the same time? Oh, the competitive. Yes. Uh, so it's five v five. 
Um, and, that, and that's spread across three different modes. Uh, you have incursion, devastation, and then meltdown. And devastation is, is more of a familiar uh, type of uh, capture and hold sort of uh, deathmatch. Um, and then incursion is probably the mode that's most inspired by MOBA gameplay, because you have, you have these AI-controlled minions that are, are spawned, and they basically they help you get through the map and, and take down sentries along the way until you are, your ultimate objective is to destroy the, the enemy's uh, base. Okay. So, so when you're selecting a character, do you, does that, picking your character and supporting, you know, the match that you're going into, is that an important part of it? Because if, if you have 5v5, and you know all the other characters that you that you're paired up with. Yeah. I mean, that can be like a team-based thing almost. Oh like, yeah, I mean that that was a that's a huge part of what they're going for. I mean, we wanted to we wanted to create situations where, uh, you know, you might have like a support character like Miko, or you have, you know, so a character that can can buff your team. Uh, you know, if you're playing um, like Montana or or Boulder, these like really tanky tanky yeah. characters, uh, uh, you you almost always want to have some kind of support role that's like following them around and like throwing buffs on them or, or making sure they stay healed because they're going to take a lot of damage. They're going to soak up a lot of damage from the other team. Um, actually, when I play, uh, I usually, when I usually play Orendi, and Orendi's, uh, yeah, you played Orendi. The best character. Yeah. Orendi, also, also um, voiced by the, the voice actor the Tiny, Tiny Tina. Even better. There you go. Yep. There you go. Singing so, endorsement. <laughs> So uh, she's just super mobile, and she's like very fast, and she causes a lot of damage. But if you get caught, if you like get caught in, in in a really big battle, you could go down pretty easy. So I usually have a buddy following me around with Miko, and she's and she's just like healing me the entire time. So I can just like stay alive forever, just dropping crazy pillars of magic on people. So it's it's a lot of fun. The game's looking fantastic. My last question is, what is the ETA? ETA? When can we get our hands on this thing? Yep, it's gonna come out this winter. Um, for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Excellent. Excellent. Gage, Chris, last question. What's your favorite part of the game? My favorite part of the game? God, that's that's tough. Um, or Indy. Uh, well, yeah. I do Actually, uh, you guys haven't seen uh, Benedict yet. Uh, Benedict is in the trailer. and He's a sniper? No, no. Benedict is uh, the big rocket hawk dude. Oh, he's like right. he's a big yeah. hawk guy with a huge rocket launcher. And he has a very, he has a very like cool play style because he can fly. And he's just like... He's like the old school like rocket character, so you can like do rocket jumps and stuff. I actually, he's been my favorite character for a long time. I love that guy. If, does he is he voiced by Sam the Eagle? <laughs> he's he he actually is voiced by by a very very funny actor, but you have to wait and see there. Okay, well perfect. Well, Chris, thank you for joining us. Yeah, Make sure you absolutely. check out Battleborn. Stay any news for Battleborn is definitely coming through us. Make sure you stick here for Press Start on Press Start TV for all things E3, all things Battleborn.